Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday evening devotion. As you notice, we are changing the format of our Tuesday evening devotion. This used to be our Saturday evening devotion, but we feel like we wanted it to have something in the, towards the midweek in order for us to be strengthened all throughout the rest of the week. The Bible says to enter the, the gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. We believe that as we start off our devotion for today, we will enter the gates of heaven, the gates of God with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, Father, that as we begin, Lord, to launch our Tuesday evening devotion, we declare, Lord God, that you will teach us how to worship you with all our hearts, God. We thank you for strengthening us in our spirits, Lord. As we worship you, we pray that you will be with us, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's worship the Lord. From the beginning you have proven true Moving over the waters, creating something new Just by your breath you have opened eyes all of creation filled by you with every promise you call to mind that we are your children loved by you i won't be afraid but you lead me through uncharted
continue Lord God to strengthen us as we go through our journey in life Lord help us God find a deeper meaning in our life that we may find your purpose Lord in Jesus name we pray amen good evening once again my name is Noel Nanez and you are having you're joining us in our Tuesday evening devotion and we call this as our TED worship in order for us to have a mid um, week schedule for us to um, to pray and to listen to the word of God and for all of us to stay in touch with you. Today we are starting off with uh, our series entitled Deeper and the very goal of this particular series is to aim us to be rooted and founded in the right foundation and that is to be uh, abiding in his word and abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We just ended our five days of prayer, fasting, and consecration, and we are actually doing this likewise in our preaching series. So therefore, it is but fitting for all of us to continue doing this in the same pattern in order for us to be deeper in our faith in Him as we abide in His Word and in the Lord Jesus Christ. What we will talk about today is looking at God's calling. Let me read to um, all of us in John 14, verse 15 to 17, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot see or cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will also be with you. May the Lord our God anoint the preaching of his word that will bring encouragement to everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Talking about our calling in God, God wanted us to continue to bear fruit in him regardless of the situation. 
times that we're living in may not seem to be favorable and it may not have the condition in order for us to become uh, fruitful. But nevertheless, it isn't about the condition nor the circumstances of our hearts. It is about looking at what the Bible says we ought to do in order for us to remain fruitful in Him. As we read the Bible, in the Bible it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus mentioned this as a, um, you know, as a diagnostic statement for us. He said, if you love me. Now, how many of you listening to our devotion today, you, you love God? So therefore, the Bible says when you talk about us loving God because Jesus loves us first, Jesus gave us an imperative, if you love me, you will abide in my commandments. So therefore, loving Jesus entails keeping His commandments. Keeping His commandments can be interpreted as obedience to Him. It may not be easy for us to obey His commandments or even to keep His commandments. But lo and behold, God has given to us the Holy Spirit in order for us to flow through and by grace, we will be able to abide in Him. This is what it means for all of us to have a deeper meaning of our life as we understand God's calling for all of us. Loving Jesus entails keeping His commandments. The second lesson we can learn from this particular verse is that obeying Jesus involves the help of the Holy Spirit who has given us the grace and the willingness to obey. We may not be able to do it on our own strength because looking at how to obey God's Word, we will always fall short of it. But be assured that in the midst of our difficulty to obey His commandments, Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit. In fact, as we look at the Bible on who the Holy Spirit is, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a promise. He is the guarantee. He is a deposit. In the same way, He also helps us in our weakness. We, we are also being comforted by Him. In the midst of our challenges, it could, in the midst of our difficulties in life, in the midst of this beginning of the year, let us be empowered by the Holy Spirit and let Him be the one to help us to obey in the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ simply because we love Jesus. Can you say in the, thought, in the chat box and say, I love Jesus and I'm asking the help of the Holy Spirit to let me obey His commandments. The third lesson we can learn is that abiding in Jesus is to allow the Holy Spirit to be our helper, to be the Spirit of truth who will dwell in us. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is it is it's just encouraging for us that God has drafted us in a race of life, a race of victory, and in the midst of us not being able to pursue the, this, this, this life journey, He has given us the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit breathe His new life in us. Let the Holy Spirit be the one who will encourage us and say, come on, my son, come on, my daughter, you can do this, you can win. That is the calling of God for our lives. In fact, in the book of 1 um, Peter verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 14 to 16, let me read to everyone. Likewise, it says, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as He who is called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. You see, when we are obeying the commands of God, the commandments of Jesus Christ, it makes us be set apart for Him. Holiness is God's character. In the same way, it is His intrinsic nature. God does not have to do holy things to be holy. He is already holy. And therefore, as obedient children, as the Bible says, Peter gave us an imperative. We have to live holy 
as God our Father, the one who, whom we serve, is likewise holy. We need to live our lives set apart for God and be holy and let the Holy Spirit empower us to live holy lives. Because the standard of holy living, the standard for us to be able to fulfill God's destiny is for us to set ourselves apart for the sole purpose of honoring God and bringing forth His holiness in our character. Conforming not to the pattern of the world and the passions of our old ways is to allow the, the Lord God Almighty to continue to transform us in our little ways. Little by little, as we begin to abide in Him, the Holy Spirit will teach us from the words in the Bible and tells us, this ought to be stopped, my son. This ought to be continued, my son. Flow in this even more. I remember in my Christian life, you know, the Holy Spirit has actually directed me. I have the gift of encouragement. I have the gift of, um, of, of speech, likewise, and communication. But there were moments wherein, instead of speaking words of encouragement, there are moments that unconsciously I would actually condescend people and discourage them. The Holy Spirit came on me as I was reading the Bible, and he said, I need to bridle my tongue. If there are words that are not encouraging, I need to dedicate my lips to the Lord and say, God, this is not holy and pleasing to you. So therefore, surrendering it to the Lord is allowing the Holy Spirit to bridle my tongue and to change me to be conformed to His image and likeness. Holiness is God's will for all of us. Christ-likeness is being Christ-like in all our ways, whether that would be in the way we respond to things, to things whether that would be in, uh, in communicating to other people, whether that would be in the thought processes of our minds, or whether that would be in our actions. Christ's likeness is holiness. And this is what God desires for all of us, a life that is set apart for God. Would you like to live a life that is set apart for God? And by becoming set apart for God, we live our lives here on the earth in order to reflect the very image and likeness that he has created us in. The whole of the people around us, whether that would be our friends, our families, are looking at the genuineness of our faith. So therefore, we allow the Holy Spirit to change us and let them see Jesus Christ in us. It's actually the little things that would make a person come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. It is not just the big preachers or the miracles in life. Yes, it would be contributory to a person's coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus, but ultimately, it's actually the testimony of a believer. And that is us. That is you and me. We need to live our lives to become a testimony for people to be inched closer and closer to Jesus Christ. Let our lives reflect the glory of God. Let our lives reflect the Christ character in us. Yes, we're going through some situations. It could be related to this pandemic, or maybe it's not related. But nevertheless, we dedicate ourselves to God and allow Him to change our ways, change our perspective that we may live a life set apart for God. Finally, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. We are followers of Jesus Christ first. And then, I'm a husband. We are followers of Jesus Christ first, and then I'm a father. So therefore, being a husband to my wife, Iris, I need to reflect that holiness, that 
purity, that relationship that reflects the image of God in me. That Iris, there is no one that I love but my wife. And I would always be with her through thick and thin, and I would always express my love for her because I am a husband. And then I'm a father to Hannah and an angel. Everything that I do reflects what God wanted me to do as a father to them. I would hug them. I would embrace them. I would kiss them. I would put encouraging words to them because I'm allowing the words of my mouth bring the holiness of God in their lives. And then I'm a pastor. My responsibility in preaching the Word of God is not just because I'm a pastor, but because I am a Christian. The words I preach to you may not only be a word that can be preached to everyone, but let that word likewise transform me first, God, as I was doing my preparation for preaching, I was also praying to God, Lord, is this very visible in my life? Am I receiving your life? Am I believing the life? Am I living the life that would reflect your, your holiness in my life? This is my aim. What about you? You're probably a doctor. What is it that God is telling you to do or not to do anymore in order for you to reflect God's image and Christ's likeness. You may be an engineer. What is it that you're doing in your office? Are you reflecting the image of God in your offices? You may be a student, and maybe times are difficult in this online platform, but are you still living your life in purity and holiness and saying, Lord, I want to be excellent, Lord God, in my studies. I don't want to fail my, my exams and my quizzes because I am reflecting you to my teachers and my classmates. Are you an office worker? Whatever you're doing, are you dedicating everything that you do to reflect the glory of God? The Bible says, do it all for the glory of God. This is how we will be able to to do and obey God's calling in our lives. It isn't easy, but we will allow the Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us as we continue to abide in Him and in His Word. Let's pray. Father, today in the name of Jesus, we are believing, Lord God, that greater things has been in store for all of us. We know even, God, that in the midst of this um, situations we face, God, there's a variety of situations we face, Lord. There's even a myriad, God, of, um, of challenges that everyone experiences. We, as we are experiencing this, Lord, we believe likewise that you will open our understanding, God, that in the midst of this, Lord, let the glory of God be reflective of our, of our words, our action, even our thought patterns. We are so grateful, Lord God, that you are breathing new life to us. New year, new life, new faith, new victories to be conquered. Thank you, Lord God. Breathe new life to us. In Jesus' name. Let's just worship the Lord. We have seen you move, we have seen your glory, we know when you speak, all our chains come falling, we have seen you move, we've seen battles won, we have seen you move, see it out.
thank you, Lord God, for your grace is readily available for all of us. You said in your word, God, your grace is perfected in our weaknesses. Before we end today, I would just like to ask from uh, ask everyone watching us, what is it that the Holy Spirit is telling you that has to go right now? Is it a thought pattern that you've been um, thinking of for, for quite some time now? Maybe that thought is not pleasing in the eyes of God. Is it your work ethics? Is it pleasing to God? If I am reporting for work, whether online or on-site, am I on time or I'm late? It has to be reflective. My work ethics had to reflect the Christ-like character in me. If, it is, if you're a teacher, am I teaching my students with passion as if I am doing it for the Lord and not just for them? What is it that is hindering you to reflect the holiness in your life? Is it a sin pattern? Is it a sinful habit? The Holy Spirit is showing that to you right now. It is simply because He wants you to be holy as the Lord God Almighty, the one whom He serves, whom we serve, is a holy God. Let the Holy Spirit give us grace. Let the Holy Spirit teach us how to abide in Him. Receive the Lord's uh, prayer and blessing. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord let His face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are thankful for you joining us in our TED worship. God bless everyone. We'll see you in our weekend worship.